All right, today is January 4th, and we are talking about Unit 2 targets. And we'll start with, um, at the by the end of the Unit 2, I hope that you will know that law and public policy are created and implemented by three branches of government. Each functions with its own set of powers and responsibilities. And number two, the political process creates a dynamic interaction among the three branches of government in addressing current issues. Now, um, we're going in a little more detail. Those are very broad. We'll go into greater detail daily on these. In particular, for the first one, the law and public policy one, we're going to be looking at establishing the roles for each of the three branches. We've already talked about um, the roles of the House of Representatives in last semester's work. We will be spending more time on that, and you will be held responsible for that knowledge for this semester. So that doesn't go away just because it was the end of the semester. Now, also, um, we're going to talk about the Constitution and how it assigns each branch special powers and responsibilities. We're going to look at the legislation or legislative branch and how it makes uh, laws. In fact, that'll be one of the first things we'll do. We're going to then talk about the executive branch and how it enforces laws, and then the judicial branch and how it interprets laws. And finally, the actions and procedures of all of these branches then establish public policy. We'll define what public policy is, but at a future date. All right, so specifically today, we're going to focus on how the Senate and the House of Representatives work together. Um, we're going to look at what are the rules that each house must abide by. All right, so using Cornell notes. So if you are you have been absent and you do not have this information, go to Moodle and look under Unit 2 resources and you will see Cornell notes. Go into Cornell notes. They're just like what we did the first 9 weeks. Go in there and then what you'll need to do is copy down this information. So we're going to begin at Section 3. We're going to talk about the Senate. Section 2 had to do with the House of Representatives. This is about the Senate, and this demonstrates the bicameral Congress, or two houses. All right, so you need to understand in the Senate, those people that represent us in the Senate are directly elected for a total of six years. So one-third will stand for election every two years in November. So you have 100 senators, and a third of those, so 33, will be um, elect, stand for election um, every two years. Now the qualifications, in order to be a senator, you must be 30 years old, you must be nine years a citizen, and a resident of the state of Ohio. If you remember, the House of Representatives, you had to be 25 years old, seven years a citizen, but a resident of the state. Now, our senators, the two, are Rob Portman and Sherrod Brown. You should know that. Okay, Senate has sole power to try impeachment. So, we need to understand that the House of Representatives, they are charged with deciding if someone should be impeached. Once they've made that decision, that uh, whether it's a president or a member of the House or the Senate, once they have decided that that person should be impeached, then it goes to the Senate. And for all intents and purposes, they are the trial. They are, the, the trial takes place there. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court presides over this. So you have a judge, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and then the, the whole Senate then acts as basically a jury. After hearing all of the evidence, it takes a two-thirds vote to remove anyone from office, whether it's president or a member of Congress, it takes a two-thirds vote to remove them. So this right here basically sets up the trial. Okay, The judge, which is the Supreme Court Justice, and he then presides to make sure all the rules are followed, and then if they vote that it can be impeached, they will. They'll lose their job in all intents and purposes. However, they must 
have a two-thirds vote in order to be removed. All right, so section four. Section four has to do with elections. Federal elections, like for example, president or election for the House or the um, Senate, um, those are all held by the states. However, the Congress enacts the laws to regulate those those particular elections. So you need to understand the rules are made by Congress, but the states establish and hold the elections. So however, uh, each state has a different form of elections, but Congress it has made the laws or the rules by which all of those states must follow. And Section 5 establishes the fact that um, what is needed in order to conduct business in the in the Congress and what they say here is it, it requires the number of people to be at least one half plus one necessary for uh, a quorum and a quorum as you see in the red is the number needed for a meeting to be legal so in the case of the Senate which is very easy to figure out because there are 50 people in the Senate then one half would be 25 I'm, I'm sorry 50 plus one would be 51 and they, in order to have a quorum in order for them to cut conduct business they needed 51 members of the Senate now for the House of Representatives divide 435 and half plus one and that would be what's needed to conduct business now the last part of section five though also makes sure it's clear that the House and the Senate well Congress in general cannot have private meetings. They must have um, things published. In other words, they have to publish journals which list the bills passed, amendments made, and votes taken so that everybody is clear on what is permitted and what is not permitted. Um, and what, I mean, in, in other words, it's keeping things out into the open, that there are no secret organizations or secret meetings. Um, at least that's the goal. All right, in order for us to do a good job with these Cornell notes, is we also have to come back and, and think about what it is that we've learned. What has, um, what is it that we could say, for example, in this section right here, this section right here that I'm circling, how can we define that or let not say define it, but rather summarize it? What would be two or three words that could summarize this section? Think about that for a moment. Did you write anything down? Here's what I thought. This is about Senate membership. It's about how you become a senator. Now this next section right here has to do with something a little different. So let's let's look at this. How would you um, summarize this? I thought it was in terms of impeachment. And um, a student suggested that you also needed to note that it takes two-thirds majority in order for somebody to remove from office. So two-thirds and impeachment. Now elections here, how would you summarize this? I noted laws governing elections. Now these do not have to be, when you summarize, this is for you to know. It doesn't necessarily mean what I'm thinking of. So as we continue to do Cornell votes, I'll be asking you to identify this information and to summarize it using two, three words. Now down here, this part right here, we actually um, spent a little bit of time um, in class, and this is what the class members came up with. Whoops. They noted business needs a quorum. So in order to conduct business, they needed a quorum, all right? Then they also said publish for public, and that's what this said right here, and I think that works fine. All right, so that covers this section. Now, you have a task in order, and I want you to complete your Cornell notes, and then at the bottom, I want you to write 
uh, compare and contrast the House of Representatives and the Senate. Now that requires you to go back to last semester to the notes, the first um, notes that we used here for um, Cornell. You'll find those and you want to do a compare and contrast as what are the responsibilities and the laws for the Senate, that's under Section 3, and what are those and, and contrast those with the House of Representatives. So you'll go back to your notes from there and then fill out this information. It should be a paragraph. It should be well written. It should be at a minimum a paragraph. Let me say that. It could be more than a paragraph. All right, think about what it is that you need to write. Write it well. All right. Um, if you have questions, come see me. Thank you.